good afternoon everyone hope you're all well look at this here we are on the Cotswold Way over about seven or eight days so not just 102 miles between Chip and Camden to Bath but traveling through time through the Iron Age the Romans the Saxons and the Normans Look at this, fantastic. Great company with Bruce. <laughs> right then, onwards and upwards. So this is Dover's Hill, just outside Chipping Camden. We've just started. Let's go. Yeah, the views were absolutely spectacular, as you can see. So here we go. Um, day one was Chipping Camden to Stanton. Uh, on this stage of the walk, uh, we experience the very essence of the Cotswolds, the mellow glory of its buildings and the enchantment of the breezy wolds with their extensive panoramas. Chipping Camden is one of the loveliest of all the Cotswold market towns. As soon as Camden streets left behind, the route climbs onto the escarpment where Dover's Hill rewards with long views over the Vale of Evesham and the distant Malvern Hills, as you saw previously. Breaking away from the scarp edge, um, the way continues along what's known as Milne Drive over the fields and across the A44 onto Fish Hill, where the base of Broadway Tower seen here uh, and more fine views, allowing an opportunity to walk along its famous streets of Broadway and return into the hills. The top of Broadway Tower is said to be the highest point of the Cotswolds at 1,089 feet, although Cleve Common claims to be the highest ground point. Occupying a grassy knoll, it commands tremendous panoramic views over the Vale of Evesham with the chequered fields and the scarp edge. Then after spending a while at Broadway Tower looking at the commanding views, it was a gentle walk down the slope into Broadway, which was absolutely fantastic as you can see. And then onwards to uh, Stanton for the end of day one. How you doing? So here we are, day two on the Cotswold Way. Uh, last night we stayed just before a little village called Stanton. And now we've been walking for probably about uh, a couple of hours. Stanton was about eight miles into the route. And uh, we had an early start today. So we started about half six. And on our way to Winchcombe, as you can see, it's spinning with rain a little bit, but nothing too bad. Views are absolutely fantastic. You can just see the ridge in the, uh, in the distance, I think. So there we go. Next stop, Winchcombe. Off we go. Come on then. So here we are at Bellas Nap. The Cicerone guidebook says that this is a fine example of chambered tombs or long barrows of the seven Cotswold group. The name means hilltop beacon, which suggests the site was used by the Saxons for it stands above Winchcombe, which is or was occupied during Saxon times 
Bellasnap is a wedge-shaped mound measuring 178 feet long, 60 foot wide and about 13 feet at its highest point and dates back to about 3000 BC. At the northern end is a false portal with two horns lined with dry stone and that's blocked by a massive slab. When it was excavated in 1863, the remains of five children and the skull of an adult were discovered behind the portal. There were two chambers along the eastern side, one at the west and another at the southern end reached by a shallow passage. Walled with stones and laid in almost identical fashion to many of the dry stone walls seen along the Cotswold Way. No less than 26 burials were found to have been made in uh, the paired northeast and northwest chambers. And the remains of two males and two females in the southeastern chamber. And here's a bit of slow motion entertainment for you, just as Bruce and I reach the highest ground point of the Cotswold Way, which is Cleve Hill. Fantastic views, as you can see. Day three, You're still standing, <laughs> still laughing. <laughs> Actually, I think it's the drugs kicking in, isn't it? <laughs> oh dear. So last night uh, we stayed at a place called Colgate Farm. That was just outside of uh, Charlton Kings. So nice little campsite, 10 pounds per person per night. And that wasn't too bad. Now we're on to um, Hartley Hill and Birdlip. So, there we go, the sun shining on the righteous. Between the clouds anyway. Just across the A40. Right, onwards and upwards, see you in a bit. Quickly Hill, dim and distant memory. Quick beer in the Air Balloon Pub and onwards to Birdlip. Look at this. So here we are, welcome to Cooper's Hill. Some of you may know this hill, it's quite famous. Some of you possibly don't. So down this hill, every year, they have competitions, they roll a, a block of double Gloucester down and 
people chase it down whoever gets it uh, can keep it that is absolutely incredible what do you think bruce can you do it <laughs> not and live no absolutely <laughs> but the view spectacular <laughs> Quite possibly the last view you're ever going to see. Wow. That is just something. Whoever does it, I salute you. You're as mad as a hatter. Morning. Right, here we go. Day four on the Cotswold Way. Uh, we're at Painswick Glamping site. Um, really nice little site. Last minute. Um, pitch up here had a chat with a lady called Rachel who owns it and um, Bob's your uncle about eight or nine pitches really peaceful really quiet just what the dogs were ordered so shower and toilet block there come down and have a look at this got your own little clubhouse right on the lake come on let's have a look the wood burn was on last night and I tell you what Bruce and I apparently nearly slept on that sofa absolutely shattered by the end of the day but it's incredible warm dry I won't switch the lights on hopefully you can see it Little kitchenette, fully stopped. Okay, mom. So we're in Painswick, as I said, looking to get to Dursley today, probably about 17 or so miles. We're just gonna see how it goes, completely wing it. Right then, shall we? Let's go. Painswick is a delightful old market town, a bit like Chipping Camden at the start of the walk. A small one at that, but unlike the honey gold of Camden, Painswick stone is strangely white or light grey in colour. As a result, the houses appear a little bit more formal. The market town dates back to the 13th century. In the Civil War, royalists attacked the town, damaging St Mary's Church with fire and cannonballs, marks of which are still evident to this day. The churchyard is noted for its clipped yew trees, its Renaissance-style table tombs, and the lynch gate, whose timbers, decorated with carvings of bells and music, come from the belfry roof after the spire collapsed in 1883. So we're just before Standish Wood, we've got a 360 degree view. Before I show you the view, I've never seen one of these before. A topographical view of the surrounding area. So as well as the geography of the landscape, it's indicating tracks, directions, heights, and where the local towns and cities are. I thought it was absolutely fantastic. And that's how you do it. <laughs>
So, day five, Cotswold Way. And last night we uh, stayed up at Coley Peak. Great views to wake up to this morning. So we're now heading into Dursley. Um, it's probably only about three or four miles from uh, where we pitched up last night, so not too far. As you can see, beautiful day. So we've been averaging about 15 miles a day, steady pace, lots of up and down, but it's been good fun. We've had a laugh and onwards and upwards. So we'll catch you soon. So we're just looking to stop off at Dursley and then on to Watton Under Edge or Hawksley after that. Right, so after a quick beer or two to sort ourselves out, just after uh, North Nibley, we went up to the Tyndale Monument on Nibley Knoll. Uh, this is a prominent and impressive landmark that can be seen from a huge distance. It stands at 111 feet and it was designed by someone called SS Toulon and erected in 1866 in memory of William Tyndale, who translated the Bible into English. A plaque suggests that Tyndale lived nearby in North Nibley about the right time, um, but this is unconfirmed. There you go, so coming into Woodmore Edge after being through North Nibley and stopping off at the Black Horse pub into civilization. Well, good morning, here we are. It's day number six in the Big Brother house, also known as the Cotswold Way. Um, long old day yesterday, but it was really good. Thoroughly enjoyed it. Ended up staying just outside Hawkesbury. And today, early start. We started off at five o'clock, would you believe it? Um, been going about an hour or so now. So we're off to Horton and Little Sodbury and probably hopefully get within about six or seven miles of Bath and then um, we'll make a decision either to crack on or stay there overnight and just have a really short walk tomorrow which would be great so we'll make that decision then. So this is Sodbury Hill Fort. This is one of the most impressive on the walk, consisting of 11 acres enclosed by ramparts and ditches. It was constructed in the Iron Age, but it was considerably strengthened by the Romans who, it is thought, used it as a frontier post. Although it's not been excavated, a few Roman coins have been found in the turf.
so end of day six and we're at, uh, we're at cold ashton which i don't know whether you can see sleepy little village yeah. and there we go and um, we've been through um started at hawkesbury today been through tomerton a few historical sites and bits and pieces so it's been good uh, 14 miles today i think bruce and i were having a look we were having a look and we were probably averaging about 18 miles a day which has been pretty good for us not too bad at all but we're absolutely shattered so i'll probably leave it here and i'll catch up with you later So here we are trudging slowly up to the Groundville Monument, uh, which marks an area known as the Battlefields on Lansdowne Hill, where on the 5th of July 1643, Royalist troops pursued a parliamentarian army led by Sir William Waller into what's now remembered as the Battle of Lansdowne. During the pursuit uphill, Waller's men fired their cannon into the Royalists, but Sir Beville Granville stormed the hill on horseback in an attempt to stop the guns. He was successful, causing the parliamentarians to retreat, but in the moment his men broke through, Granville was hit and mortally wounded. He was carried to, to Cold Ashton Manor, where he died the same night. Day today. We started last Sunday afternoon. Today's Saturday morning. It's approximately half five in the morning. Look at this, a little bit cloudy, but the views quite something. So, about six miles to do into Bath, 102 miles done then, plus a couple of deviations, so about 105 miles all in. It's been absolutely epic. It's been great. Bruce in the background doing his thing. So coming to the end of the walk with just a few streets to go, I was reflecting on the last seven days. Great company, a few great beers, scenery everywhere, wonderful finishing at the monument, exactly the same as the one in Chipping Camden, outside Bath Abbey, looking so majestic. Right in the centre of Bath, just opposite the pump houses from the Romans. What a way to finish. Anyway, thanks very much. Take care.